Okay, we've talked a lot about the fundamental sciences of training and coaching in general. We talked a lot about how the body adapts and that general adaptation syndrome, and we talked a lot about some, some exercise physiology. We talked a little bit of anatomy. We haven't gotten to the fun stuff with the muscles and the bones yet, but we, we talked about how the muscles and the bones adapt to training, how they work, how the heart works, and how it adapts to training, all that fun stuff. Right now, we're going to kind of shift gears. It's a whole new science called kinesiology, the, which is basically the study of human movement. And this is obviously very important because, hey, if we're going to exercise, we have to move. So we have to understand how the body moves. So in order to really understand how the body moves, before we even get there, we have to get a couple terms down because we have to be able to describe movement properly. So the first place that we're going to start is something called anatomical position. As you can see from my little picture here, that's just a standing position, feet straight ahead with the palms turned forward. Now this anatomical position is, is basically the starting place in how we describe human movement. And it's been around for thousands of years. This is how we've always started our discussion on human movement is starting from this position. So when we start describing movement like flex, flexion and extension and abduction, adduction and internal and external rotation, all that fun stuff that we're going to get to in just a second, well, you have to imagine it's always starting from this position. Now there is another term I want you to be aware of, it's called anatomical neutral. It's more of a natural standing position where your, your palms are just facing each other, all right, down here. It's also called fundamental starting position, anatomical neutral. So those are two common terms, once again, anatomical position, anatomical neutral, you just need to be aware of them because when we talk about movement, you always have to imagine that's more or less where we're starting from each and every time when we start describing it. Now there's lots of other terms that you're probably already familiar with um, as far as anatomical movement descriptors. And, but if you aren't, I'm, I'm sad to say, yes, you're just gonna have to memorize them. Uh, it's not too much understanding here, it's just purely memorization. So let's talk about some of these. Once again, you probably know most of them, anterior and posterior. Anterior towards the front of the body, posterior towards the rear of the body, right? Superior versus inferior. Superior is above a reference point, like right now my nose is superior to my chin, <laughs> while my nose is inferior to my eyes. So once again, superior is above a reference point, inferior is below a reference point. Medial versus lateral. Medial is toward the midline of the body, lateral is away from the midline of the body, or it might be the midline of a segment. So I might say, if I'm looking down at my knee, I might say it's, it's more towards the medial aspect of the knee versus the lateral aspect of the knee, if I'm just looking at the knee joint itself. Also, we have proximal versus distal. Proximal is closer to a reference point, while distal, like distant, is, more, is farther away, is further. Kind of getting the idea, I'm sure, right now. Now that you have also bilateral, both sides, right, versus unilateral, one side. You also have superficial and deep. Superficial means near the surface. Deep means deep. I hope you don't have to memorize that one too hard. <laughs> and then you also have what's called cephalic and caudal. So you have cephalic towards the head and caudal towards the tail, or your tailbone down here, all right? The uh, last set here is prone versus supine. Prone. A prone body position is laying face down, okay, on your stomach, while supine is, is laying on your back, face up. We're going to learn about pronation and supination at basically the, the, the hand wrist area and also at the ankle foot a little bit later on. But when we're talking about a prone position versus a supine position, prone is the whole body laying face down while supine is the whole body laying face up. Now, remember when we talked about joint structure and function. We were talking about the skeletal system, we talked about how joints were made, and we talked about how joints move. Those were, and that movement was called arthrokinematics. Now I'm going to give you a little hint right now. Kinematics is, basically means you're measuring movement. Okay, that term actually comes from physics. I know you're excited, aren't you? Physics, whew, right? We'll get to more of that later. But so, arthro joint kinematics movement. Oh, we're talking about joint movement. Now we're going to talk about osteokinematics. Another term sounds very familiar, and it talks about uh, osteo meaning bone, bone movement. Well, how is that different from joint movement? Well, what that means is we're describing the direction of movement, okay, in three-dimensional space. Whew, that sounds a little scary, doesn't it? Basically, we have to remember that we live in 3D space, you know, an X, Y, Z axis, right? So, you know, we're going to axis going this way, axis going this way, axis going this way. So I can move, I can move forward and back, all right? And if you imagine a plane of glass, imagine a plane of glass, you see, a, see the little picture next to me right now. 
you got a plane of glass cutting through that guy right there, and you can see it's called the sagittal plane, cutting him into right and left halves. And if you move forward and backwards, if he moves forward and backwards, you can see that movement is parallel to that sagittal plane, that plane of glass. All right, so forward and backward movement like so would be sagittal plane movement. Now, you also see he's got a plane of glass cutting him into front and back halves, all right? So movement out to the side, all right, to the side would be frontal plane movement. Well, he's also got another plane of glass right here called the horizontal plane. You also hear sometimes the transverse plane. Movement along that plane is called horizontal plane movement. Now, typically, if I'm in anatomical position, that would be actually rotational movements would be parallel to that plane. All right, let's look at another little picture. Let's look at this little lunging picture right here of this guy doing the lunge. You can see that uh, this forward lunge, this, this forward lunge and step back is primarily a sagittal plane movement. Now, a couple things I want you to get in your head. First of all, you never move strictly in just one plane of movement. There's always movement working in all three planes at all times. But why do we differentiate this? Okay, well, we want to say which plane of movement is often dominant. Is it, is it dominant in the sagittal plane, a forward or backward movement? Is it dominant in the frontal plane? Is it dominant in the horizontal plane, in, the, in that rotational motion? Or are really all three planes moving quite a bit in a big dynamic movement? Well, it depends. This is how we describe movement. It's not that sagittal plane movement is good or bad or horizontal is better or worse or anything like that. It's just how we describe it. It's kind of, think of it like a compass. We're describing direction. Are we going north, south, east, west, right? Are we working in sagittal plane? Are we working frontal plane? Are we working horizontal plane? Well, it, it, it is what it is. We just need to be able to describe it in the right direction, if you will. Now, you're also gonna realize that, once again, we always said that the bones of the body move as levers around an axis, which are the joints. Well, those joints, if I'm still thinking about three-dimensional space, have three axes. It's X, Y, and Z is how we would think of them in geometry, and those of you who hated geometry, I'm sorry, bear with me. But in kinesiology, we call them the longitudinal axis. So imagine an axis, you, here's my little picture, my little guy with the three axes here, going straight through this way. Well, movement along the longitudinal axis I'm going to go right here, would be movement along the horizontal plane. Here's the axis of rotation, and now I'm moving about the axis because the movement, is perpendic the movement is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So if I have an anterior posterior axis that goes anterior to posterior, goes right through me this way, I'll go to the shoulder again, goes this way at the shoulder, then if I move about that axis, that would be what? That would be frontal plane movement versus coronal movement, which would be going through me this way, that'd be movement along that sagittal plane. Or here, once again, here's the coronal axis, moving the shoulder this way, once again, sagittal plane movement. So you've got three planes and three ax axes that cause movement in each plane. Now, now let's take that back a step. Now let's, now let's look at how it really applies to motion. Any movement within the sagittal plane, or most movements, I should say, I call it either flexion or extension. Now, if it's in the sagittal plane, it's about that coronal axis. And extension is a straightening movement, all right, where the relative angle between two adjacent segments increases, okay? So that would be like my elbow joint is extending right now, all right? Um, it would be like my knee, well, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, <laughs> is extending right now. Um, so extension versus flexion is a bending movement where the relative angle between the two segments decreases. So flexion, extension. We have a great little animation I definitely want you checking out that goes over all of these in greater detail than I'm going through right now. I'm just going a little quick right now. Now, that was sagittal plane movement about the coronal axis. What about frontal plane movement about the anterior posterior axis? Well, that would be this way right here. That would be abduction and adduction, now let's think about those two words. Abduction, here's the midline of the body, is away from the midline of the body, from anatomical position, that's abduction. What happens when you abduct something or someone? You're taking them away, well, that's what you're doing. You're taking the, you're taking the arm here away from the midline of the body, so that's abduction. Adduction, adding, you're adding it back to the midline of the body. So you have abduction, abduction, versus adduction, adduction. Okay, away from the midline and towards the midline, respectively. Then lastly, 
you have horizontal plane movement, once again from anatomical position here, about the longitudinal axis that I already mentioned, and that would be internal and external rotation. Okay, I'm going to bend my elbow, just, I'm going to flex at the elbow so you can see this a little bit better. External rotation is an outward, outward turning away from the um, turning of an anterior surface. Now, this movement of external rotation, also, also often called lateral rotation, you'll hear them both. Internal or medial rotation is an inward turning of an anterior surface, all right? Or a position of internal rotation is any point inward from neutral, okay? So I have neutral, okay, in, inward rotation, external rotation, internal, external, or all, right? Or medial and lateral rotation. So now what I really want you to do is, is start thinking about how the body moves in whatever sport or athletic event or any type of working out exercise that you do. Start breaking it down. You know, I, I, I recommend, I'm, I'm a geek, you can tell that already, I'm sure. I actually step back when I'm working out and during my rest period and I watch people and I say, well, how are they moving and why are they moving that way? Because we have to remember, once again, exercise it seems like a lot of science. It's not rocket science, though. You're putting a stress on the body. You're telling the body to move a certain way, and the body's going to adapt to be able to move that way better and better and better. Well, is that movement specific to their goals? In other words, is it going to get them to their goals efficiently? Because all this talk about physiology and the, the adaptations of the muscles and adaptation of the bones and the heart and all that, all has to do with the proper movement we want to make sure we get that quality movement in there first and foremost. So in order to make sure we get the quality movement, you have to understand the basics of movement, which means you have to understand these basic terms in kinesiology.